tonight, Damien Harrett, who's brought a large number of exhibits from the Manchester Coastal Museum. Um, David's no stranger to Furness Vale, as he was a frequent visitor in his former role with the post office. He also played a few times on the Villa of the Manchester Postal Museum. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a um, great pleasure to be here tonight. As the lady said, I do have links with Furness Vale. When I was working for the Royal Mail, he used to come out to the sub-office, auditing the post office booth. And uh, would you believe inspecting the local post boxes? So I've got quite a, a good knowledge of the local area. And um, when I was in counter services at the post office, I used to come through Furness Vale on the way to Buxton. I used to go out to the wilds of Wardlow and uh, Rushton Spencer, Macclesfield Way, and Hartington. Rugby places like that. Now, I took early retirement uh, in 1999, so I re retired at 50. I've done 35 years in the business. Started off as a messenger boy. I was on the postal side for 18 months and then I went on the county. So um, I got uh, quite a, a varied knowledge of the workings of the post office. Well, please don't mention the post office, what's going on today. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really, really sad the way it's, it's gone down, in my personal view, but I won't dwell on the, uh, the topic. It's just a bit sad, really. And, and when I took early retirement, from when I was at Oldham Road in Manchester, as I say, I did 35 years, so I'd had enough then. Now, <clears throat> collecting, um, as you can see, this is just part of the collection here. I started collecting as a lad, I suppose. Um, like a lot of kids, I used to have um, that older gentleman will remember the, the dinky toys, you know, from the 1950s. Hornby Double O and places like that. So I did have a Hornby Double O train set. And of course I started work as a boy messenger in 1963. And I was also mad on trains. And um, another link with Furnace Bale, and I expect you've heard of Gerald, Gerald Siding. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to cycle from Stockport to Gerald. I think you had to go across the, the, um, the crossing in Furnace Vale Station and go down that road to, to get to Gerald. And he used to spend quite a you know, few hours up at Gerald. <laughs> so, you know, railways, um, steam trains, that sort of thing. And um, when, when the steam engines finished in the late 60s, I started going to traction engine rally. As you know, have you heard of the Bugsworth Steam Group? Yeah. You know, uh, the Marchington. Are they, are they still around, the Marchington? Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I know that he bought Flying Scotsman, didn't he? Yes, he did. Dr. Marchington. Well, <clears throat> I used to go to the steam rallies, and then I went down to the Dorset Steam Fair in 1987, and I sort of got talking to people about exhibiting. And um, somebody said, oh, why, why don't you exhibit? I said, well, I've got a few old post boxes. So in 1988, at the Dorset Steam Fair, at the Lanford, Lanford Forum there, I did a display about half a dozen post boxes, different sizes, and I actually loved it. And I was 
a sort of courtly collecting book and an exhibiting book. <laughs> So that was 1988, and we're in ne nearly 2023 20, now, and I'm still doing it. You know, showing to you nice people tonight, you know, collection. And of course, since 88, I've been everywhere. I've been to steam rallies, <coughs> stamp exhibitions, I've exhibited it. Earl's Court in London. Used to go down to the stamp, big stamp fairs at, at uh, Islington twice a year. So I got quite involved with the sort of ex exhibiting and what have you. And um, I think the highlight of my sort of exhibiting career was when, when I went to Earl's Court in 2000. That was the, the stamp world in 2000. That was really amazing, that was. You know, to be in Earl's Court for a week, really nice. Yeah. So, of course, when I took early retirement in 2000, the post office used to give me a van to go around doing the displays. And um, when I retired, of course, I didn't have the the same transport arrangements. So in the sort of 2000 sort of era, I started going much into sport, you know, rugby, cricket and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, I'm not getting any younger at the time. So as you can imagine, carting a few post heavy post boxes around, you know, it's, it gets to me a bit, so I, I decided to do smaller exhibits like you see tonight. And uh, what permanent displays at um, Manchester Women Show Park, <coughs> Riverside Garden Centre at Pointon, <coughs> and, um, and now um, would you believe in that Manchester Children's Cemetery? In a lovely venue there, I know it's, some people don't like cemeteries, but it's a lovely spot. Can't wish for better, really. You've got a Remembrance Lodge there, and I've got a whole room, and most of it is devoted to, obviously, believe in a cemetery, Remembrance. You've got 1,300 war dead in there, in Southern. So that's where I am at the moment. And of course we've collected over the last, what, 20 years, um, I've sort of devoted more, rather than, not so much the hardware, the post office, but letters, postcards, that sort of thing. Um, relating to, to war and what have you. So what I'll do now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll take you through the display of what you see tonight. And um, as you can see, there's, there's such a varied uh, amount of material. These posters here, I got from an online auction only a couple of months ago. But the way they show up, it's not a particular nice subject wall, but because of my sort of line of work and remembrance, um, you know, it, it really, really highlights what was going on. The first one is World War One the poster there, the second one is the Second World War. That's commemorating a, a Canadian VC. And a, the, the plaque here, it's, um, it was placed at a lot of public buildings, um, libraries and places like that. And I got that 
a couple of months ago. One of my sort of favourite topics, really, it's got to be the Battle of Britain, the 10th of July, 1940, till the end of October. And the, the plaque there at the back shows the Battle of Britain Memorial at Capel Lipen, which is near Folkestone. And I actually went there a few years ago. I haven't been recently because obviously with COVID and, you know, different things, you know, you just can't do things, you know, as it probably some of the older people here tonight. I was stuck indoors for three months in 2020, which was pretty awful. I think if it hadn't been for my little cat and uh, my Facebook pages, you know, I I think I'd have been a bit rather in despair. So that, that features the memorial at Capel at Ben, and it shows a, a pilot sat on a, an old World War II gun emplacement. I actually read High Flight, the famous um, poem at the memorial, another thing I do, I do a bit of poetry. If you like later I'll read you something, but I'll, I'll just sort of ask you later if you want me to read something like in Flanders Field. Yanks, as you probably know, is a film um, set in World War Two. A lot of it was filmed around Stockport and Hyde and Tameside and they had an event at um, uh, Upper Mill they pranked the, the Yanks weekend and these are one or two bits I got to take to the Yanks weekend of course that, that has been cancelled now for the next I think I think it will take place again in 2023. <clears throat> this was a bit of hardware I picked up several years ago. The Whaley Bridge Post Office. <laughs> you probably remember, Whaley Bridge Post Office was on the corner just before you go up to Horwich End. And, uh, I said to the, the new guy, John Hopwood, I said, do you mind if I have this sign? Oh, he said, yeah. So, so that's the, the original sign from Whaley Bridge Post Office. I notice it's gone from <coughs> Canal Street now. It's at uh, Warwick End, I believe, Post Office. <coughs> right, some of the Commemorative covers and postcards. I like this one. It's a nice silk and it's um, wool from the trenches. A lot of the material I've got of World War One. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> you might buy me. <laughs> Um, as I say, one, one or two of the letters I have from the World War I, they're, they're quite harrowing. In fact, I've got full archives from different soldiers that were killed in action. This is the memorial plaque that was given to the next of kin to um, World War I casualties. Alan Hawksley Hill, he came from Merseyside. You can pick these up if you like later. 
I don't know how many of these I've got, but I've got quite a few. And I think once you get hold of one of these, it sort of, you can look into all the, the stories behind them, where they live, what they did for a living, you know, the beauty of the internet. Um, you know, it's amazing what you can find out. Of course, when they first started doing exhibitions, they didn't have all the, you know, the Commonwealth War Graves um, websites and what have you. So these, to me, are very, very special. You know, this is, this is commemorating young Alan. And it, it gets to me sometimes when, you know, when you think, oh gosh, you know, what happened to him? In fact, some letters I've got from a guy called um, George Davison. He, he died in, on the 17th of June, 1918. He was in the um, Royal Artillery and his bunker got to direct it. And poor George and his colleague is still there today. You know, and I sometimes think I must go to the Western Front and pay my respects to these lads because I've got all the material here. Um, going away from war a bit, and talking from the post office happened. <coughs> the number of postcards that were issued, you know, pillar boxes on, postmen, you know, this sort of thing. You know, it's amazing. I've got, got loads and loads of them. And of course, the post office were very involved <coughs> with military as well. As you can imagine, um, sending mail out to the, the Western Front, you know, to the thousands of lads that are out there, it was a big exercise. Well, before, before World War I, there was a, a special territorial regiment formed the Post Office Rifles, the 49th Middlesex Regiment. And that, Notice uh, is one of the first, quite rare, the notice for special constables for the post office rifle. 49th Middlesex Regiment is the, the first <coughs> regiment to, to set up, and then it went to the uh, 24th Middlesex Regiment, who served in the Boer War and they were known as the Army Postal Corps. In fact, there's a medal here for the Army Postal Corps, you can have a look at that. And what's going on to World War II, um, obviously World War II, as I say, he is a national hero. But yeah, you, you see his um, statue in, in Edinburgh where he ended his life in 1963. And he's, um, I think there's a statue of, of him in Poland, I think in London as well. So, but yeah, this is my tribute to the Polish bear. Jan Kimia. <laughs> Butcher. <laughs> right, now before I land up the time, David. Oh, fine. Fine, David. Uh, I'm on the you're, not, you're not fed up, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's nodded off yet. <laughs> Seriously, though, when I've done talks, or oh, not me personally, but when he, when he used to go to the Philatelic Society, 
you'd say so, my dear old gentleman. You know. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'd hate you that, you know, if I was doing a, a presentation and you somebody was, you know, a bit like the House of Lords, you know. <laughs> right, now, <clears throat> has anybody heard of the bombardment of Scarborough? In 1914. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All, the, all your hands up. Who's heard of? Sorry, there's a few of you. Heard of the Scarborough bombardment? Well, okay. On December the 16th, 1914, Scarborough was bombarded by three warships of the, the German Navy, and it it killed 18 people. 18 and there's some people. And it was 8 o'clock that morning and you know people were just having a breakfast and going out for you know the walk and what have you. And one of the 18 was, was a postman and it really saddens me when I like Scarborough. It's an amazing place for the history side of things. Um, I've actually got a Facebook page, Scarborough World War One, and this this is what you can do, ladies and gentlemen. If you follow a particular area, you can collect the different. All these are seen from that fateful morning of 1914, and it's my sort of way of commemorating these poor souls from Scarborough in uh, 1914, so please have a look at that afterwards. Now this, this album here, I think some of you have seen it already, it contains covers this one is signed by Peter Scott, you know, the well-known naturalist. There's one here, Barbara Woodhouse, that's featured on the, the dog stamp. Um, Patrick Moore, you know, the sky at night. And, <coughs> David Bellamy, the, he's another naturalist, isn't he? Um, going back to the early sort of part of my talk, talk um, Battle of Britain pilot. That one's signed by John Cunningham. They call, they call John Cunningham cat's eyes because he was particularly good with the night fighters, particularly during the Battle of Britain. So that's signed by John Cunningham. I've actually got a bust of John Cunningham in the museum at the moment. It's too heavy, he's too heavy to carry around. Um, whole host of different ones here. Um, Norman Wisdom, a well-known comedian. Have you got any Manchester United supporters in here? Uh, do you all support uh, Manchester City? <laughs> uh, whoever you support, Alec Ferguson. The famous painter Terence Cuneo. I love Terence Cuneo because he used to put little, little mouse on his pictures and he, he started looking at where's the mouse? There's one in particular, the train one, and you see the little mouse perched on the, on the track. He's always going to get run over. <laughs> then there's a whole host of army covers. 
Charles Dickens. So I think tonight's program, I think Charles Dickens is probably the most sort of eloquent and famous and what have you. But then you've got these other people here. Come on down, to Bruce, Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> and of course, um, I can't think of his name, Les Dawson as well. But Les Dawson hasn't signed on. I understand Bruce Forsyth's ashes were buried at um, the Palladium. Didn't know that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think to finish off, there's one cover here, and it's signed by the lovely lady, Vera Lynn. So, I think I haven't got much else to say apart from we'll meet again. <laughs> okay.